With all parts and tools on standby, we're ready to get stuck in with our Prusa Core 1 build, starting with a relatively straightforward part of the process, base assembly. We're going to start with one of the larger pieces of the kit, the steel sheet that forms the base of the printer, which you'll find inside the first and largest metal parts package, buried beneath the rear and core XY panels. Take care as this bottom panel is heavy, and carefully place it flat on your work surface so that the ends are bending upwards, and so that these elongated holes are facing towards you. After which we reach for our pack of zip ties. We'll be installing these into the three sets of smaller holes down either side of the plate. So with a zip tie in hand, feed down through one hole and back up the other, before feeding the end through so that it only just catches on the teeth. Do not tighten down just yet as we'll be feeding cables through later. Moving further up to the next set of holes then, it's the same process. Again, securing onto only the first few teeth. Repeat the same on the third set of holes. And finally on all three sets of holes on the opposite side. Leaving us with six loosely installed zip ties. With that prepared, place the panel to one side for the moment, while we prepare the Z-axis motors. You'll find two of the Z-axis motors together in the one package. Note that the trapezoidal nuts can remain in the package for now, as we won't need them just yet, so leave them here for safekeeping. Also note how both motors are labelled Z-axis left and Z-axis right. The main difference between them being cable length, although considering this is a core XY printer we do have a third Z-axis motor to install this time round, and this is found in the bottom of the electronics and chamber parts box. Another Z-axis left, again with a shorter cable. Anyways we'll need to prepare these with some added parts, namely the motor washers, found in the electronics and chamber parts package, the Z motor mounts, as well as the Z rod mounts, both found in the printed parts package. With these to hand, place a transparent motor washer pad down onto the first Z axis motor. Cover with a Z motor mount, making sure the protrusions on the part are facing upwards so it sits flush on top of the washer, and with both parts aligned with the screw holes in the motor itself, proceed to secure using four M3 by eight screws, one going into each corner. As we're going into the metal motor mount, these should go in nice and easy. Take care not to over tighten though, a nice snug fit is all that's required here. With the first motor complete, repeat the same process on the remaining two Z axis motors, taking care with order and orientation of parts of course, and securing until nice and snug. So with all three motors prepared, we can go ahead and bring our bottom plate back into play here, as we'll now install the Z-axis motors directly to it. This time round, orientate the plate so that the folded edges are facing downwards, and the flat side is up top, and with these longer holes facing to the right side. Before taking note of the Z-rod locations, so we have one in each left side corner, and one in the center of the right side. Starting with the right side center hole then, reach for the motor labeled Z axis right, so this is the one with the longer cable, and feed the rod all the way through the hole in the plate, going from bottom up of course. At the same time we want to ensure the motor is orientated so that the motor cable is facing towards the right side of the plate, this is an important step. Repeat the same with the two remaining Z axis left motors, although going into the two corner holes on the left side of the plate, and orientating them so that the motor cables are facing the right side of the plate, just like we have with the right motor. So just to recap, we have our bottom plate with the flat side facing upwards, and the two elongated holes facing to the right, after which we have the Z axis right motor on the right centre, and the two Z axis left motors in the left corners, all orientated so that the cables are facing to the right side. With that verified, we can now secure the motors in place, starting with the right motor then, line up the motor holes with the plate, and proceed to secure using four M3 by eight screws, 
You may find using the included Allen key easier here as we want to ensure the screw goes in as straight as possible and proceed to tighten each screw down only until snug. We're screwing into the plastic motor mount here so you'll want to apply adequate pressure so as to not strip any created threads. A nice snug fit is all that's required. So with the right motor now secured into position, before securing the left side motors, proceed to insert a rod mount into the opening beside the first motor, and use the included wrench to rotate it 90 degrees in order to lock it into place, before continuing to secure the motor using the same process as the first, so more M3 by 8 screws, and again taking care to go in as straight as possible and only until nice and snug. Repeat the same with the final motor, so insert the rod mount, rotate 90 degrees to lock, before securing the motor with another 4 M3 by 8 screws. So at this point we have our two left motors in place, as well as the single right motor, with all three motors orientated so that the cables point out to the right side, as seen here. In fact, the two left motors actually now form the front side of the printer, so moving on we'll now refer to this side with the two motors as the front, and the side with the single motor as the rear. With that noted, place this assembly to one side for the moment, as we will now construct the next part of the bottom frame, using these four folded pieces located in the metal parts package. Take note that the four pieces are not identical, we have a front profile which incorporates several cutouts, a rear profile which has two holes on the flat side, and two universal profiles which are identical and have no holes on the flat side at all. Anyways we'll start with the front plate then, so that's the one with the cutouts, along with one universal plate with no holes on the flat side orientating this piece that the protruding flange is to the top. That way we can attach both pieces together, taking care to ensure the flange in the front plate is inserted under the universal profile, not on top. And with the holes aligned, go ahead and join both parts together using a single M3 by 4 screw. It's a similar process with the rear profile next, so this is the one with the two holes locking it into the other end of the universal profile, again making sure the flange always goes underneath, and securing with another M3 by 4 screw. This leaves the final universal profile for the final side, place in position, making sure the flange on either end is always sitting underneath of course, and securing with M3 by 4 screws, one into either end. With this frame complete and secured together, referring back to the front profile, so the one with the cutouts, locate the small protrusion on the inner side. This will have two holes just below it. Retrieve two spacer pins from your electronics and fasteners package and carefully insert into the two located holes. Push firmly on the pins so that once inserted they sit perfectly flush in the hole. Next we'll need to find our four anti-vibration corner feet located in the electronics and chamber parts package, and proceed to peel off the protective layer from the first pad, and stick into the corner of the flat side of the frame so that it's aligned with the outer edge of the panel. Repeat on all four corners. After which we can completely turn the bottom frame so that it now sits onto its newly installed feet, although take care to ensure the front profile is still facing towards you. At this point we can bring in the bottom panel, complete with the Z axis motors back into play and gently lower the rear side into the rear of the bottom frame, placing all the motor cables into the centre of the frame, before lowering the assembly the rest of the way so it sits neatly inside. And that's important, so double check to ensure the bottom panel assembly sits completely inside the frame on all sides, and that the front profile, so the piece with the cutouts, is on the same side as the two Z axis motors. Also check and ensure none of the motor wires are being pinched in between both assemblies. With that all verified, we can secure both assemblies together. Starting with a corner then, slightly lift one of the corners of the bottom panel assembly, just enough so that the hole in both assembly and the frame align. After which we insert and secure with a single M3 by 4 screw. 
move across to the opposite end of the same side and replicate. So slightly lift to align the holes and secure with another single M3x4 screw. That's our front side now complete. Rotate the assembly 90 degrees and repeat the same process on this side in order to lift and secure. Repeat this process on all four sides. Once complete, we are left with our base assembly now secured to the bottom frame. Check to ensure each corner is secured with two screws. Also double check to ensure the front of the assembly, so the side with the two motor rods, is on the same side as the front frame profile, which has the cutouts. And with that, our base assembly is now complete. This can be placed to one side for now as we move on to the next chapter of our build with back assembly.